How much does it cost to buy a house? This is a question I get all of the time. I'm Jeff Chubb with eXp Realty, and I'm here with Jason Bonarigo, and today we're talking about the closing cost. How much does it actually cost in order for you to go under agreement and actually get to the closing table? So Jason, I'm going to go first with an expense that I know about, which you don't really deal with, which is the home inspection cost. Sure. And if you want to do a home inspection, it's going to cost you probably about 500 bucks, maybe 600 bucks. Um, and if you don't want to, well, buyer beware. Do I have to do a home inspection? You check? do not have to. Okay. And... Does a bank require you to do it? It does inspection? not in most cases. No, it actually doesn't on, on anything anymore. Used to VA used to be a well, starter, pest inspection. No. Pest VA inspection. Yeah. Pest yeah. inspection. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to, but I advise it. Yes, yeah, 100%. Definitely advise. advise it. Yeah, I get that question all the time. So, all right, home inspection appraisal, 500 bucks out the window. Yes. So talk to me. Yep. I have what, an application fee yes. and an appraisal fee, right? Uh, actually, one and the same. And oh, that's they are. The okay. one, one piece that we collect up front uh, using good faith. And, and, and most of the time, it's because we have to pay that third party. Right. People understand a lot of times or don't understand that the appraiser does not work for the bank. They work, they are contracted by the bank, but right. they are an independent third party or separate business. To give it independent value of that property. Which is true because, all, yes, I won't get into that. But yes, but that's why it's a third party, which is a good thing for the consumer. So anyways, we have to pay them uh, no matter what the results are of the appraisal and we could be left kind of holding the bag on that. So we collect that up front from the consumer. So you're not being a greedy banker by requiring somebody to pay an application fee up front. Well, I'm that too, but no, okay. I, co I collect the fee, but no, that's the only you thing collect we collect the fee, but you're just literally collecting it because I have to pay because I have to pay them, and that's one of the first things that start. And obviously, if something goes wrong, or God forbid, the client uh, you know can't get the mortgage or backs out of the deal, we have to have obviously have that cost paid for. And that's usually, and I can't speak for every lender, but that's usually the only fee that we collect up front as a good faith method and a handshake of doing business, but also to pay that third party. Bank. Okay, so in general. Pour out like generalities yep. here. In general, how much is that application? We usually click like uh, five hundred to seven hundred dollars. Okay, yep. so my application fee, which covers my appraisal, title insurance is yep. a pretty big one. Let right, me just let me put a memo on that, just so for the for the consumers, that does go towards your closing costs. So right. if I say your closing costs are five thousand, that seven hundred that you've already provided is coming off that bottom line right. of the table, which, which could be confusing. Home inspection does not. Yes. Um, so title insurance. Yes. That's something that's going to be required. Correct? Yeah, the lenders is, yes. And we could probably do a whole other video, and yep. maybe we will on, on title insurance. So we have lenders, and then we have an owner's And then we have an owner's. Well, we have and title insurance. two separate, but we have title insurance. That's going to be a, lot, a hard cost light item on your purchase. Um, you have to have lenders title insurance no matter what. Um, right. Owner's title is a little bit different. That kind of protects your equity. I won't go into a massive detail, but more that's 100% optional there. And the more the house costs, the bigger the title insurance. So that's one of those Correct. variable expenses. Yep. And then you have homeowner's insurance, so you need to pay, what, one year ahead? One year ahead, okay. yeah, because we're going we're gonna to take that amount. Let's just make easy math. It's $1,200 for the year for the annual premium. We're going to take that and divide it by 12. $100 a month, we're going to collect that inside of your mortgage payment right. every month. But that is a hard cost up front. In your escrow account. So, Correct. But you're not collecting that. I'm actually going out. I'm going to the insurance company. I'm paying for it. And then I'm sending you the binder. Correct. Correct. Right. And we so, do the math. We put but the homeowner's papers. insurance is required. You have to pay. have that. But a tree falls on your on your roof. Right. A friend slips on your walkway. You got to have it. Well, Christmas Day, we had a tree fall on our shed. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you uh, go. So, so then we have recording fees as well as attorney fees, yes. which a lot of people over you know overlook and don't necessarily account for. So. Yep. Attorney fees can be variable, especially if you're buying a depending house. Depending on the attorney. Right. Sure. Yeah, yep. depending on the attorney. Some attorneys will give you a good discount if you're buying a house because yep. they do get compensated in other ways through title insurance premiums as yep. well as paid by the bank to close the loan. But then there's some recording fees too, yep. right? Yep. Oh, well, and in most cases too, the, the attorney will give you a break if they're drafting the purchase and sale. Right. Right. Exactly. We could, again, we could talk about it in more detail, but yes. But they're going to make sure they're going to check those condo docs for you. They're going to look over the legal paperwork and make sure you feel good about it. You really don't need one on a refinance, but on a purchase, we definitely recommend it. Um, and then again, they're going to make sure that you do record that mortgage, right. the master deed, and trusts and all those things and, and recording fees are included in the broad strokes of the attorney's fees. Okay, so those are all required, right? Correct. All those are kind of essentially hard costs. With yes. the exception of the home inspection, not required. And the owner's title insurance. Well, and the owner's title yes. insurance. So those are recommended, yeah. um, not required. Um, something that's not required, very variable. Don't see it a whole lot in today's world. Points. Points. Talk to me about points. Yes, that used to be. What the, is a point? So a point, essentially, in, again, very broad strokes, old fashioned, is one percent of the loan amount. Okay. So if you had a three hundred thousand dollar loan, I would say this this rate comes with one point, and that one point is three thousand dollars. But okay. again, in and a low can, interest rate market, we don't really charge right. points. So back in the or days, recommend them. So back in the days, if our interest rate was five percent, we could buy a point, buy down a point. Correct. Essentially three grand. Yep. And our new interest rate is what four percent. 
no, that would no. be a massive jump, but no, okay. you'd be motivated to buy it down to maybe 4.625 or something okay. like that, right? That's why you would do it. And again, on the larger loan amounts, it might make sense. It's just a lower rate. So a point isn't really a point, but okay. That's, that's, <laughs> well, no, 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 let's be clear. A, a point is the cost. It doesn't buy the rate down a point. And again, a lot of times that the, the consumer does think I that, wish. right? <laughs> and that would be a good thing. To go from 5% to 4% would be, that'd be nice. Okay, so with so. the exception of points, Yes. Is there a general percentage of the purchase price that we can expect for it to cost for total closing costs and purchase? You're saying a kind of a budget to, yeah, to get a yeah, feel. I'm of estimating, it. right? Yeah, yeah. You know, because I, mean, I know I could spend a little bit more on my homeowner's insurance. Um, you know, we already talked about whether you have a home inspection or not. Um, the owner's titles insurance, but, but I know in general, yeah, is yeah. There a, so if I'm buying a $500,000 house, is there a certain percentage I can say, well, on average it's going to be about? Well, that's a great question, Jeff, because a lot of times clients will say, well, I have my down payment, right? I have right. my 10%. I have my $50,000 on my $500,000 house. That's all I need. That's all right. I need. They've saved this up for over five years. Congratulations. And then... Boom, I say, well, you have to have money for the closing costs, right? Uh, so, yeah, so I would say closing costs, you, broad strokes, you can use about a 1% okay. is a good barometer. Yes. Around there. It could be more? It could it be, be obviously, but it's not going to be $20,000. It could right. be 6600 on a $500,000 loan. But again, for a budgetary concerns, I would say it's about 1%. It's a good thing to say. I have my down payment, but I also need roughly about this amount of money to have it all in. I can walk away with this money. Okay. So, a couple more questions. Yeah. Can I wrap? All of these closing costs that we've talked about into my mortgage if I'm buying a house. No. No. Okay. No, I <laughs> no, cannot. No, you cannot. That is a question that we get a lot. And people always come to me it's and gone. say, well, my friend wrapped his closing costs. And I'm like, well, no, he didn't actually. Because you really can't on a purchase. And I don't want to bore you with all the gazillion. But I can on a refinance? But a refinance you can. Gotcha. And that, that's probably a whole other video because it's based on equity and, and right. how much cash out you're taking and things like that. It's all about equity and cash out. If you're on a purchase, out. remember, the key thing is, folks, is that you, you, know, you have your down payment, right? right? So if I allow you to inflate your loan amount, and that's what rolling in means. It just means that I'm borrowing 500000 Can you give me the extra 5000 to pay it? So now I'm giving you 505. Well, it's just semantics. Well, I then just, that goes back to the appraisal of the house. The house didn't appraise at 505. Right. So and now we don't have that equity, or I just increased your PMI. So why would we do that, right? right. It doesn't make sense. So now something that we can't can do inflate though. that loan amount. You can't. Right. So something that we can do. Cannot. Which say. is having the seller pay some closing costs. Nah, seller assistance. That's a good way to do it. Yes. Right. Yeah. Which in a way is inflating the price, generally speaking. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, but so say if that $500,000 house and we negotiated with the seller that they were going to give us $5,000 in closing cost assistance. Yep. Well, that's now great. I got that five grand that can go towards all these exactly. expenses. And that's what we see very, very common, right? Uh, obviously, uh, and that's a great way to do it. And that is called a seller concession or a seller credit. Right. Uh, and then we can do that. And the other last thing to tie in there is a lender credit. Sometimes we can do that where sometimes we inflate the rate. Maybe instead of getting 3%, you get three and a quarter. Because again, Jeff, sometimes clients don't actually have it. They right. just had the down payment. They didn't know it, and they bought a house and they didn't have time to save up that extra five, six, seven thousand. So then all of a sudden it's like, ooh, what do we do? Let's get creative, let's help you out, let's still get you a budget and a payment that you like, but maybe we can help with a lender credit and maybe pay for twenty-five dollars or $3,000 of those closing right. costs. But it's moving money around on a spreadsheet, moving numbers around it is, on a spreadsheet. Right. Is really to get them is. across right. the finish line and right, get them exactly. what they want. Which is why it's so payment. important to work with somebody who's done this more than one time, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've done two, actually. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, okay, so, so we have our seller concessions. You know, that's all done, so we can do that. Now, what happens yeah. if in that seller concession, I get $5,000 back from the seller yeah. and my total closing costs were only 4300 bucks? What happens? <laughs> Loaded question. You got me. You almost got me there. Yeah. You, you don't. Well, you don't get it. It doesn't. It doesn't. Well, you kind of lose it actually. Right. It yeah. goes back to the seller. It does. You're it goes back not. to the seller. I was just going to say that. You, Mr. That's Reed. when you come up with the points and all this. I'm right. trying to solution here, but because it does happen sometimes. But that was a good question. Which is, by the way, why it's so important to work with an experienced real estate agent Correct. who actually knows Correct. that and make sure. Or that people who know how to work together. Right. You know. Um, just make sure that you're not donating money back right. to the no. seller. Yeah. We. I mean, what you we, want. Believe it or not, I won't mention any names. We have one right now that. They're getting a twenty-four thousand oh. dollar seller concession, Jeez. right? Okay. Closing costs are not twenty-four thousand dollars, folks. Yeah. How do we do that, right? So then that's where you kind of get creative, and that's when maybe points could help out, maybe charge a point and about buy down the rate. Dollars. Exactly, yeah. you know. So th that's when we talk about that stuff, and again, experienced folks and, and asking the right questions. Yeah. So.
So if you're finding this uh, information useful and you're trying to learn more, we're always looking for great questions from, from our audience. But also there's that subscribe below uh, button. Feel free to click that and uh, you know more great content coming at you. Again, I'm Jeff Chubb with EXP Realty. You can reach us at 617-480-2600 or online at boston2.com. Jason? Jason Monterigo, RMS Mortgage. Uh, cell phone's the best way, 617-413-5038. Give me a call or shoot me a text. We look forward to hearing your questions, and if we can help you in any way, don't hesitate to reach out. And in the meantime, we hope you're having a great day.